Okay, this is it guys. The time has finally come. The procrastination has lasted long enough. I am talking about finally attacking my stash, my hoard <laughs> of fabric that I bought specifically with the purpose to resell. It's hilarious. You guys have seen my sewing pattern videos and I've said I don't sew but I am fascinated by sewing patterns and fashions and styles of times gone by. Um, I'm kind of obsessed with fabric as well, but I don't sew, I don't do anything with it. I bought this to share with other people and it's been sitting in bins for way too long. And so now the time has come to fix that. So why do I put it off? I really have no idea. I have sold some fabric. I know how to sell fabric in general. I'm not sure exactly where the mental block is coming from. Um, obviously, searching and hunting and thrifting is so much more fun than listing. So that's one thing. But I have sold some fabric. I've done it before. I make money at it. And so really why I don't just attack this backlog, I have no idea. So. The only thing I can think of, there are times where, like for example, um, I bought this roll of fabric and it's really awesome. It's got all the information on the selvage of who designed it and who made it. It's a, it's a like Victorian bunnies having a tea party. Like who wouldn't want that? And um, I think my stumbling block on that is the fact that I need to unroll it off of here, find out exactly how much yardage is here, roll it back up on there, decide how I'm going to sell it. I don't know. Whenever there's some kind of stumbling block like that, I end up just, oh, I'll do that later. Um, that's one thing. And the other thing is I am not super confident with what fabric, what material is made out of. So we'll talk about that a little bit more. The the fabric I have sold, I've gotten away with just saying, I'm not sure exactly what it is. It feels like this, blah, blah, blah. And then take like really good pictures and let the buyer decide. And that works fine. So that's not really a good excuse either. I know how to measure fabric. I know how to list it. I still, I still thrift it. Um, I stopped for a long time. I just kind of avoided that part of the thrift store because I knew I had the backlog and it's just kind of funny. Like, you know, my husband's not very judgy, but you know, every once in a while I'm like, I bought some fabric and he's like, uh-huh. But anyway, okay. So I didn't buy any for a long time, but I have bought some recently and I would like to get it listed and then might as well get everything else listed as well. It also includes some, this mental block also includes a lot of times um, linens and that might be part of it too, the, the photographing of it. Fabric, I can figure out ways to photograph it in my setup. Um, linens sometimes are harder finding the big space. I'm thinking this is the wall to, like next to my stairs. I might be able to drape things over that. So I'm thinking I might have some new options for tackling these things that I have been putting off for way too long. There is money. You can't see the bins very good right now, but they're in my thumbnail. There is money in those bins. It's like bins full of money. <laughs> and I need to turn the fabric into money. So it's time. So I will be doing a listing challenge. You are free to join me. It doesn't have to be fabric. Um, it can be anything that you've been putting off. And um, we'll talk about that more at the end of the video. But first of all, I just wanted to kind of explain a little bit about listing and selling fabric from what I do know. Now, what do I look for? Well, I generally, because I love vintage, I end up looking for vintage fabric. And um, the way I can tell, some of it I can just tell because I've had experience with vintage clothing and vintage fabrics over the years certain things just have a certain feel or certain look, but there is a way also to figure um, age out to a degree. Now, um, the 50s, 1950s and earlier, the width of the fabric was about 36 inches. This is very helpful in figuring out the age of something. So I have this amazing 
mid-century fabric. I'm going to scooch forward so I can show it to you. Um, mid-century fabric, very uh, kitchen related. It's got gold. It's got aqua. And yeah, Tanya, don't come at me. I know I asked you about this fabric like three years ago. I never listed it. <laughs> Anyway, if you're watching, we'll talk about that later. I have a phone a friend when I have fabric questions and you should find one too. <laughs> okay, so this is very mid-century modern and it is 36 inches wide. And how we measure width of a fabric, I'm gonna show you on, let's see. I had a good piece that I can show you on, okay. Here's a nice piece where you can kind of see. So this is how we want to measure. We need to look at the piece of fabric and open it up. And if you see on the sides here, this white area is called the selvage. Okay, a lot of times there's things like printed on it. Okay, so those are the sides of the fabric. And so you want to measure from one selvage to another selvage, and that's the width of your fabric. And then as you go down the selvage, you know, you go down the selvage, that's the length of your fabric. So selvage to selvage is the width, and then going down the selvage is your length, and that's the yardage that you have or the amount of fabric that you have. Okay, so I do look for vintage fabric. Um, it doesn't matter to me if it's 50s or earlier. That's just kind of helping date it because there's plenty of great 60s, 70s, 80s, even 2000s fabric that will sell. So later on, later decades, the width of fabric would be like 44, 45, 46 inches. And then decorator or upholstery fabric like this. Okay, this is a very mid-century, probably 60s fabric. I have no idea how to describe that, but I will figure it out. See, it's shiny, but it's got like a textured pattern. This is upholstery fabric, and it is wider than your average um, fabric. So it would be like a decorator for like curtains or furniture or things like that. Okay, and those will usually be about 58 to 60 inches wide. Now, what I also just learned is that current fabric is, a, is about 42 inches wide. So that even helps us narrow down even more. Um, I'm not sure when they switched that, 2000s, sometimes they switched it to 42 is what I just read. Okay, so I always tend to kind of pick up very loud, you know, anything you could call bright or mod or groovy or whatever. Um, I do have in my bins, I noticed quite a bit of Hawaiian style fabric, like I just show, showed you. This is a bark cloth type fabric. So I usually look for that. So eye-catching, bright, mid-century, I always look for things like that. I look for border prints, they're called. Here's an example. This is a newer piece, right? Even though the girl on it is very Art Deco looking. Um, this is newer, but it's called a border print because as you can see, like you could use it as like a skirt or something like that. Maybe, I don't know, that might be too long. But it's, the pattern kind of repeats along the border. Sorry, everything's kind of wrinkled. Okay, so that one I would need to get cleaned up, get pressed a little bit before I list that. But anyway, if that makes sense, you know, there's a, a pattern along the border of it that repeats. So it's not like an all over print everywhere. Okay, I look for those. People look for those. Um, I do look for like licensed or character type prints as long as they say on there that they're licensed. 
I found recently at a yard sale this Nintendo Super Mario fabric. And I think this will do pretty well. It's from 1990. And Super Mario, Nintendo, it's all very popular. Um, so you make sure that's licensed. You know, same thing. I found this. Um, this is not yardage. This is called, it's a, like a fabric panel, which also can sell. But this is a panel to cut out and make a, a pillow, I believe. And it's Cabbage Patch Kids. Okay. So look for the licensing. I also pick up a lot of juvenile, I call it, fabric. Like, for example, this one. This actually is a tablecloth, so just pretend it's fabric. <laughs> I think it's a tablecloth. Or somebody hemmed it for something. Okay, so juvenile fabric does, I have like this one. It does really well on Etsy, and it sells pretty quickly on there. So I have random juvenile fabric, and I usually look for that. Um, Right now, um, flocked, flocked fabric is doing really well. I don't have an example of the really sought after stuff, but here's some I picked up recently I'm excited to sell. It's a nice gingham fabric. That's the, you know, the pattern in the background with the green, the check, but then the little orange flowers, you're not gonna be able to tell on there, but I can feel them and they feel like felt. Okay, so that's like flocking. Now there are some that are sheer, like a sheer material, and then the flowers are bigger and they're flocked. That's going for really good money. Another similar idea is called Swiss Dot. Um, this I don't think is technically Swiss Dot. It's just kind of a raised stitch on there, but it's that kind of idea where it's polka dot and then the dots are flocked, right? Swiss Dot. I have actually a 70s dress that has that on there that I should list also. But anyway, so there's, oh, feed sack. Feed sack is also something I look for. I just picked this piece up, I think it is. It has the same texture as the confirmed feed sacks that I know about. But honestly, I'm gonna tell you, feed sack can be its own video. There's so much to it. The collectors know their stuff. They know exactly what to look for. I do have some odds and ends of feed sack. I think that I've picked up different places. Um, and some of those are confirmed. You know, I'm not going to go deeply into that subject right now. Um, but we will talk about feed sack another day. But that is something also that I'm going to work on and I'm going to confirm that they're authentic feed. It's authentic feed sack material before I list it as such. Okay, so those are the types of things I look for. Like I said, I love vintage, so I love vintage fabrics. Anything that catches your eye, and especially anything, for me, it makes it easier if I can describe it. You know, if it's just a plain piece of blue fabric, I'm like, uh, yeah, somebody might need that, but I don't know how to describe it. So if you can do some kind of theme, I've got this big heavy tapestry fabric. It's got a winter theme, so yeah, I should have probably listed it yesterday. Um, but there's all sorts of keywords and animals and things like that that you can add to the listing that would help people find it. Does that make sense? Okay, so that's what I do. So now, when you're making your listing, this is what your listing, this is what I include in my listings. So first of all, I include the size. and. I do the width and the length, width first, and then the length, and I just do that measurement in inches, first of all. But then I also put yards. So for example, if something was 45 inches wide, and I showed you how to measure that, right? Selvage to selvage. If it's 45 inches wide, and then I measure it, and it's 72 inches long, I just put 45 inches by 72 inches. Somewhere else in the title, I'm also going to say two yards because 36 inches is one yard, 72 inches would be two yards. So I'm going to put two yards in the title for people who are kind of scanning or searching that way. Now putting the inches measurement also helps because 
the 45 inches lets them know whether it's vintage or not vintage or, you know, kind of helps them get an idea about the age of the piece. Now, say it's, it's in between two yards and three yards, right? Um, so say it's like 45 inches wide, but it's 88 inches long. I personally just put two plus yards. So they know it's not quite three, but they know they're getting a little bit more than two. Okay. Now also, if your fabric, and I forgot to look for an example of this, but maybe this tapestry fabric works. Now some fabric has what's called a repeat in the design. So it's like what it says, right? The, okay, you see a certain scene and then you go down and you see it again and again and again. I would try to like measure that repeat, that scene roughly and get also give, not in the title, but in the listing, also give a measurement of how big that repeat is. Sometimes people are trying to line up for like a chair back or something like that and they want to know how long that part is. Okay, so I would also include fabric content if you know it in the description of the listing. Like I said, I've gotten away before with not knowing and I've been able to just maybe take really good pictures, take up close pictures, show the front, show the back, all that kind of stuff and kind of give my best guess. Or I try to ask questions from people if they can kind of tell online from photos. Um, I also do that. There are tests you can do for certain fabrics. So um, the one that I hear about the most that I have never tried, but this is probably something my boys would get into, is you can take a small piece of a fabric or a few threads and you can burn them. Now, if when you burn it, the threads become ashes, then it's cotton. If it just kind of melts, um, then it's polyester or, you know, other fabrics or it's a mix or something like that. But pure cotton supposedly just turns into ashes. So let me know if you've ever tried that. If you've tried um, the burn test, they call it. Now, also, Let's just talk about it in the description. We've kind of already talked about some of these things. Oh, here's something else I forgot to put in my notes. You're also going to want to say in your notes or in your description or even in your title, if you're selling the fabric by the yard or if you're just selling the whole piece, right? So if something was, like I said, if it was like two yards, I would most likely just here, you can have two yards, here's my price for it. Now, if I've got something with a lot of yards, someone may want that whole thing, but it probably makes more sense for me to list it by the yard. So I'm just gonna pick a price, say $20 per yard. And if I did it on eBay, I could set it up that they could get a discount for each additional yard that they buy. So I would just do, you know, $20 quantity five or whatever. Someone could come through and buy the whole, five yards or someone might just want one. Now the thing is, do not cut your fabric. If you're selling it by the yard, do not cut it until it is purchased and paid for. So what I tend to do is just sell the whole kit and caboodle altogether. I don't really wanna spend time cutting. What if I cut wrong? All that kind of stuff. <laughs> I don't wanna mess with it. So a lot of times I just sell the whole yardage, even if it's a high price. Um, other people sell it even by the half yard and they end up making really good money that way. Um, they just let the customer decide what, how much of it that they need and how much that they want to spend on it. So either way, that's up to you, whatever you feel comfortable with. Um, I am gonna probably do a mix of both. I don't know, I'll probably play around with it as I get into this. And I will let you know in later on how it comes out. So as we said before, as you're describing your fabric, a lot of times if you wanna look on the salvage for any information. So these Victorian bunnies were designed by Amanda Depew 
for P. Kaufman Fabrics VAC colors. Okay, so that helps me a lot. I was able to find even other, that's going to fall. I was able to find other fabric or other listings of that same fabric. Okay. And so we want to put that information on there. Like I said, you can find somebody who knows fabric. A lot of people talk about going into fabric stores to ask, you know what? I, I don't have time for that. So <laughs> I prefer to send pictures to somebody, or like I said, I call, I phone a friend. There are Facebook groups that are dedicated to sewing and fabric and even selling your fabric. And so that might be a place to ask questions. I got a lot of uh, information about my feed sack fabrics from feed sack fabric groups. And a lot of times, like I said before, well, I don't know if I said that today, but um, they can turn into your customers as well if you wanna do that. Lots of questions, right? Just ask questions, use Google Lens, you know, you might find your fabric listed someplace else and someone else might have some information on it that if it seems legit, then go for it. So you're gonna to wanna to put, you know, describe it as best as you can. If I don't know what the fabric is and I'm not sure about it, I am just gonna admit it. And I'm just gonna say, you know what, I don't know. I don't know if it's a seersucker or a, what's the other one, plisse or plisse or something like that. They're very similar. So I would just be like, I don't know exactly. It looks kind of like this. Here's some pictures and it's lightweight. It'd be great for summer type things, right? So I just kind of do the best I can with it. Um, there's a lot of words. There's a lot of fabric types that I don't know. I just don't know them, right? But I just learned something new and I'm gonna share it with you. I'll try to pop up um, what it looks like here, but and I'm going to put a link in the description down below. But in the Vintage Fashion Guild website, they actually have a fabric like identification section. This is amazing. I just found this I'm reading through some comments on in a Facebook group and somebody recommended it. They also have another button over on the side that talks about um, like like if your fabric looks like this, then it could be these options, right? Isn't that amazing? And some of the entries have pictures and things like that. So that'll be fun to play around with. That was a resource that I didn't know existed. Vintage Fashion Guild, I'll put the link down below. So that might help with describing as well. Now for photos, this is the last but most important part of our, of our listing, right? is you're gonna want to take a picture of the pattern up close, right? You're gonna wanna get right in there. I just like fill the screen with the pattern, okay? Um, sometimes what I'll do too is I'll take a picture, well, I take a picture of both sides, right? A lot of times people can tell what kind of fabric something is. So like this side is not as, you know, vivid as this side, so I might show them next to each other kind of thing so they can see both sides. I might take a picture like with my hand in it, especially if it's sheer, so you can see the sheerness of it. But then you also wanna take a far away picture. You wanna get a picture of like what the overall, you know, what the overall print looks like. And while you're doing that, you want to take a, a picture, at least one picture. I'm doing this vertically, but I would do this for, you know, laying flat with a yardstick over it. And so they can see the scale of the pattern and how often these things repeat and things like that. Okay. And then also, like we were talking about the repeat in a certain pattern, you want to make sure there's one picture that shows the whole seen in that repeat. And then another recommendation I had gotten that I tried on my last few listings is to, again, you'd be laying this flat, but you might even see this in fabric listings where people take, take the fabric and then they kind of twist it, right? 
they twist it and kind of make a nice picture of it kind of swirled. And that helps the um, customer see the drape of the material, right? They kind of see it instead of just a very, just flat, they can kind of see how it, how it hangs, if that makes sense. Okay, and then I also make sure to take a picture of the information on the selvage. Anything that's printed on there, I go ahead and take a picture of that as well. So that's it. I mean, it's not rocket science. It's not very complicated, right? You just mostly, it's kind of like doing a piece of clothing. You're just going to describe it and you're going to give the size and you're going to give condition. That's another thing. Um, a lot of times when things are on bolts like this or on that um, tube, you are going to want to like take it all off and make sure that there's no stains. Sometimes the stain can go like all the way through and so it just shows up on certain sections kind of repeated. Um, same thing if you get fabric that's folded up, just kind of open it all up and double check it. Um, and then also you want to kind of stretch, like tug on your material a little bit because material can also give in to dry rot. Okay, so if you pull on it and it comes apart, then it's no good and don't try to sell it. So yeah, kind of like anything we sell, you describe it, you measure it, and then you figure out your shipping. Shipping should be fairly easy. Some things can go in a padded flat rate if it's small enough. Some can just go in a flat rate box and um, it's not gonna break. So that's super easy. Okay, so I have my work cut out for me. I have all the bins that I showed you. And so this is what I'm going to do. My listing challenge from now until the end of the month, I'm going to try to list as much fabric as I can. I'm gonna to try to see how much of these bins I can get through. And that's gonna be my focus of listing for this next week for until the end of the month. So like I said, if you wanna join me, it doesn't have to be fabric, it could be some other topic that you've put off, you know, a niche or something like that that you just uh, don't wanna do it. Um, I'm actually kind of excited because I just, these are out of sight, out of mind, but I think I've got some really good things in here that I think will sell pretty well. I will probably put mine mostly on, I'm trying to decide, a lot of it will de depend on my research, but fabric can sell well on Etsy. Um, and it also sells on eBay. So I'm not sure if I'm going to cross post, just put them in both places. I'm gonna start on eBay and then move them or something or or just go straight to Etsy and kind of see how much of it I can sell there. I'm not positive. At this point in these listings, I'm not gonna use any of the Facebook groups for selling. I think I'm just gonna try eBay and Etsy and just see how they do. Um, so feel free to hit the subscribe button. What I'm going to do, if you haven't already subscribed, is go ahead and tune back in in a couple weeks and we are going to look at what sold out of these listings that I'm doing for the next week. Hopefully I have some solds to share with you. <laughs> I think I will, I think I will. And what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna include those solds in my regular what sold videos so that it can all be talked about in one place. And I am going to share what I learned, if there's anything interesting that I learned or some hidden surprises along the way. I'm gonna share that with you. And then also we'll talk about some fabric brand or bolos. We'll talk a little bit more about exact pricing. You know, like, like always look for this fabric because it can sell for hundreds of dollars or look for this fabric because it's, you know, super sought after and hard to find. Okay, we'll talk about some of those as well. So I hope you guys have a wonderful week and I will be busy listing my fabrics, but I will throw a video out here and there. And I hope, um, anyway, that all is good for you in the reselling world. Leave me a comment below. Have you sold vintage fabric? Do you sell vintage fabric? Is it a, a niche that you like? Also, I wanna know, do you have a niche that you've been putting off? Go ahead and share those comments with me too. 
and I will talk to you later on.